Thank you. Um, so yes, uh, particle velocity. Um, an acoustic wave consists of a uh, pressure component and a uh, particle velocity component. So uh, why is it important to measure it and why do we need it actually? Uh, some of the applications of, uh, of a sensor called microplone, which is commercially avail available since some years now. And it has been used for the measurement of the one and two dimensional sound intensities, uh, for acoustic dependencies measurement, for pressure measurement even, absorption and even surface scanning by uh, by allowing a speaker to produce a, a certain acoustic wave against some surface and by measuring particle velocity it is um, you can measure the uh, actually the, the surface roughness um, the um, some images about these um, applications this is used in automotive industry for measuring the uh, uh, the sound intensity of the dashboard for example and measure the sound pollution in this case or even in um, in room acoustics when in some opera houses it has been used to characterize uh, not only the entire room, but also the reflection from the chairs and uh, and whatnot. Um, the sensor we developed in the last couple of months uh, looks like this. It is very simple. It consists of only two uh, wires, and actually conductive beams uh, like this. But still, it can measure uh, particle velocity in the same bandwidth as the old generation microclones. Uh, it can measure in two dimensions. Uh, uses only uh, half of the power used by the old generation, and it is much smaller than the uh, than the old one. Uh, a bit in more detail, uh, these beams consist of a stack of a silicon natural layer, one to nanometer thick, and on top of it a, a platinum layer of the same thickness. So the stack is only 300 nanometer uh, thick, they are about 900 micrometer long and 2 micrometer wide, and these hang on the chip as shown here, in a well of about 250 micrometer. Uh, what we use here is the compaction, the, the, the principles we use for measuring particle velocity and of course the temperature coefficient of electrical resistance of the platinum layer as shown here. Um, how we drive the chip? Well, it looks like this. So we can see each beam as it were actually two electrical resistances in series as shown here. And we inject a current with the same magnitude from both terminals of one of the beams and extract the same current from the terminals of the other beams. So in short, in, in each beam flows the same amount of current, independent of the particle velocity or other parameters. Now because of this current flowing through these wires, and of course the resistance of the platinum layer, there will be some heat dissipated on these wires. Um, in case of no flow of any and kind of, of uh, uh, disturbance of the air, the temperature profile on these wires will be actually symmetrical. So that the resistance of these wires will be also the same. Now, because the resistance is the same, but the current is also the same, you will get the same voltage drop on each part of these beams, so that the voltage on the terminals of each of the beams will be zero in case of no disturbance. Now, suppose that there is an acoustic wave incident upon this chip, then this temperature profile will actually um, change in shape in a kind of asymmetrical way, so that uh, one half of, of the beam will have a temperature, which is on average, different from the other half. Now, because of the difference in temperature, you will also get a difference in resistance. And since the current is still constant, you will get a different voltage drop on each part of the beam. So that if you measure differentially the voltage across one of, uh, of the beams, then you will get a, um, a voltage, a voltage difference, which is also a measure for the uh, for the particle velocity. Something about the fabrication process. Uh, this is in short. Uh, we do. We start with a uh, one double O wafer. And we lay, uh, we, we deposit a layer of silicon nitride, 150 nanometer uh, thick. After that, we pattern the platinum. This is done by lift off. And um, a second uh, step follows, a lithographic step. So that now we get a kind of mask which consists of the second lithographic step and the platinum layer here. And this uh, mask is used for etching the exposed silicon nitride, which is done by dry etching, so that we get the uh, uh, the silicon uh, the um, uh, the bulk silicon beneath the silicon nitride. And then in KOH is the last step, we etch down this well here and then we get these hanging wires uh, above this, um, this square well. Uh, the measurement setup, it looks like this. Uh, the, uh, uh, these sensors are mounted on a circuit board which is also mounted on a, uh, the axis of a rotating table right here. And then we have a speaker, this is a round speaker, it's placed at about 15 uh, centimeters away from, uh, from our sensor. Um, the output of each of the beams is measured differently, uh, differentially by, um, by a lock-in amplifier. And of course, this whole setup is run and measured with uh, MATLAB. Um, 
this is the uh, frequency response of uh, both of these beams. So both beams uh, show uh, the same bandwidth, more or less, but the beam on the short side, shown here, shows a slightly higher responsivity. Uh, this ship has a rectangular shape, so it is one millimeter uh, wide, but two and a half millimeter long. Uh, this is not because we wanted it, but because the, uh, the process that we had to use to fabricate these in the first place um, uh, re required this kind of shape, so we had to produce these. And because of this asymmetry here, uh, you see that there is a different responsivity because this, this, this beam here on the long side not only has a, um, a long bulk of silicon in front of it, but also the wire bolts um, uh, run in this direction. And you can see the same mismatch in the um, uh, DRT patterns uh, shown here. So the amplitude is different, but it is, it is quite uh, <coughs> surprising that Although this, this, this strong asymmetry in the chip size and in the chip dimensions, you still get perfect figure of 8 with a 90 degree uh, angle between them. And um, in the second generation, something that is not in the proceedings, by the way, because these are done in the last couple of, um, of months, uh, this is the first chip we produced. This is the measurement that you just saw. And then we went on producing circle, um, round chips after changing the whole process and everything. And um, these are about 400 micrometer, 500 micrometer long uh, beams. The principle is exactly the same, only the shape of the of the chip is different. And if you look at the activity uh, patterns of this of this last chip, then you'll see that it is uh, perfectly symmetrical. And 90 degrees, there is no change in uh, in amplitude between the two wires. It is uh, it is perfectly symmetrical. Uh, no amplitude mismatch. Whatever. Uh, the old generation that is now commercially available is called the Microflow, and it is a one-dimensional uh, particle velocity sensor. Uh, it uses three wires for measuring this, this, this particle velocity in one direction. So, um, while the new generation uses one wire per direction, um, then we have a very low fabrication yield. In this case, it's about 70%. While uh, this, this cross wires, because of the, of the mechanical uh, uh, weight, uh, mechanically they are much more stronger, let's say, and they also have a high fabrication yield. Uh, the only thing is that the old <coughs> uh, generation, the three wire microflow, has a higher explosivity, 350 volts per meter per second, and this new generation shows only 100 volts per, per meter per second, but we still have to study its, uh, its noise and see how they actually do noise, because uh, these wires are also shorter, so probably you will have less noise. So maybe in the end, when you calculate the uh, uh, signal to noise ratio, maybe you will be about the same in both sensors. Um, and now the frequency response. So the uh, the old generation, and this is the new generation of cross wires. So except for this uh, for this uh, three and a half uh, uh, three and a half times um, uh, less responsivity that you get, the bandwidth is exactly the same. So um, it's pretty good. And the new generation also uses only 26 milliwatt for both wires, while the old generation uses uh, 58 milliwatt for uh, only one direction uh, measurement. So in conclusion, we have a um, clear, uh, clear figure of eight polar uh, patterns for both beams. Uh, we have only one beam per direction. Uh, we dissipate only half the power needed for two direction, uh, two direction measurements. It is mechanically more robust, which means that also the fabrication yield is much higher. It is smaller in size, and the only thing is that is we, if we optimize the shape and the uh, and the packaging, so to optimize the flow patterns around these wires, then we might be able to get much higher responsivity and also uh, uh, go above um, the old generation. Uh, before we go on to questions, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Wiffling and Professor Kainan for their uh, ideas, help and support, and of course our finances here. Thank you very much.